Today I'm rebuilding the New Orleans Saints and the objective is pretty simple. Winning this franchise through a first Super Bowl without hunting heads and without the cheating allegations. So welcome to the New Orleans Saints rebuild and let's hop into it. Welcome into my third rebuild on Madden 24. We're doing another NFC South team today. I think I'm gonna try to clean up that division, go all through four teams and then go from there. But today we have the New Orleans Saints. Their team is looking pretty good. I've already kind of went through and looked at some trades for some of their older pieces like Michael Thomas, I even on defense, some of their star players on there like Demario Davis, Cameron Jordan. I'm going to be trying to trade those players away for some young assets that are pretty good. And there's actually some pretty good trades that I can get. I'll show you guys in a minute, but this is what we're working with. The team looks pretty good. We have some young talent like Brian Brzee. I like Marshawn Lattimore as well on defense. But Tyron Matthew, Demario Davis, Cameron Jordan, I don't really see a future two or three years down the line with this team. And we're not going to win a Super Bowl this year. So why not go out there, trade them, get some value back? and really get some nice young players for our team. And then offensively, it's kind of a similar thing. I like some young pieces we have on the offensive line. I like Chris Olave, of course. He's gonna be a stud in the league, but I don't really like Derek Carr as our future quarterback. Alvin Kamara, I could get some really good value for him right now, especially as he approaches 30 years old. How much longer is he really gonna be a, a really good player for this team? Not too long. So I'm gonna cook up some trades. I think this team's gonna look entirely different after I make some of these moves, but it's what we're gonna be doing this year. I'm gonna be trying to almost tank and get a future star quarterback, but. You'll see what we can do, and uh, yeah, I, I'm excited to see how this goes. Here is the first trade we are going to do, sending Tyron Matthew a couple of fourths and a fifth and a sixth, just some late round picks for Rashawn Slater and a 2024 first round pick from the Los Angeles Chargers. Next trade, Demario Davis, a second, third, and sixth is going to Washington to the commies for Chase Young and their first round pick and next year's draft as well. Another trade done to the Los Angeles Chargers, this time Cameron Jordan for Asante Samuel Jr. and a third. We need another cornerback alongside Marshawn Lattimore. I think Asante Samuel, a young, cheap, really good option, has a lot of upside, trade is done. Dolphins offered us this trade, Alvin Kamara, Marcus May for Javon Holland to replace Tyron Matthew and a second round pick in next year's draft. We're loading up on that early draft capital. And we are unloading Derek Carr to the Pittsburgh Steelers for George Pickens, our new wide receiver too, and a fourth round pick. We're wheeling and dealing all these veterans, they're off the team. We're bringing in so many young studs. And our last trade is gonna be Michael Thomas to the Cleveland Browns for Jeremiah Awusa karamoa and a seventh round pick. So here's what the lineup is looking like now after all of those trades. Winston is a quarterback, but it won't be for long. I promise Saints fans, I'm gonna get you a franchise, a real young franchise quarterback. Two stud wide receivers now with Chris Olave and George Pickens on the outside. We still have Jamal Williams at running back. He is getting up there in age. I may look to see what's on the market for him, but I'm not expecting a ton. So if there's not, I'll just keep him. The offensive line now with Rashawn Slater looks a lot better. I think we're looking pretty good on that unit. Penning, I could move him to left guard instead of Pete. We'll see how that works out. Still have Juwan Johnson at tight end. Uh, defensively though, we're looking pretty good as well. Chase Young, Brian Brzee are now the leaders of that defense, both pretty young and have high upside. Asante Samuel and Marshawn Lattimore as my cornerback duo. Javon Holland now in the secondary to help out our safety unit, which is pretty weak now, probably one of the weakest on the team. And then Jeremiah Wusa karamo he's basically stepping in to replace uh, Demario Davis, although he's not playing middle linebacker, he is helping out our linebacking core. But eventually we still need to get a middle linebacker, we'll figure that out, but I like some of these moves on our team. A lot more young players, a lot more high upside, and now we're ready to fully get into the season. Send the preseason. Here's the early look at the draft class. I see a couple quarterbacks that I'm definitely going to have my eye on, and Michael Burley out of Tennessee, and Craig Rollins, even Dustin Malice. So I'm going to put my scouts on all three of these quarterbacks, and we're definitely I'm gonna keep our eyes on them and pick the best one in next year's draft. Also looks like this is a pretty good wide receiver draft, but we don't really have a need for wide receiver anymore. Uh, Anton Forney though, he could be pretty interesting because I do have a pretty weak linebacking core. Overall, the defense looks pretty good in this draft. Cornerbacks, right outside linebackers, all the top of the class. I might use one of my other first round picks on one of these right outside linebackers, moving to middle linebacker. We'll see how that works out. We'll have to scout and see how good these guys are. Just brought in a bunch of different scouts. Here's what the region breakdown is looking like. National cornerback, wide receiver quarterback. I think we kind of got that Looking at the top of the board, West, Central, Northeast, Southeast is looking pretty good. Definitely like how this region breakdown is. It definitely fits the need of our team, especially with the quarterback position. But we're ready to hop into the sim, so let's go ahead and do that and get to midseason. Before we get into that, I actually want to make one last trade. I'm going to accept this from the Buffalo Bills, getting James Cook and a fourth round pick for Jamal Williams. Kind of a risky trade here, 10 overalls less, but he is five years younger, and I think he can develop skyrocket in our offense. We'll definitely wait and see on that though. But James Cook, Welcome to the team, trade is done, and now we have a completely new roster heading into the season. Halfway through the season, the New Orleans Saints are three and four. It seems like every single rebuild, halfway through the season, I'm always around three and four. I'm hovering around that area. 
which definitely sucks. I either want to be doing pretty good, overachieving, or just flat out sucking. In this case, I want to be tanking for one of those top quarterbacks, but it is what it is. We're three and four. Let's definitely look and see how our team is progressing halfway through the year. Chris Olave is up to an 85 overall. George Pickens is up to an 81. James Cook has not developed a ton to start this season. Offensive line looks pretty good. Defensively, Chase Young is having a good season. He's up to an 87 overall, and so is Awusa Karamoa, two guys that I wanted to bring in. I knew they were going to be really effective players in this defense. And even Javon Holland, our new three young studs are all having pretty good years. I haven't seen a ton from Brian Brazil yet. It doesn't look like he has a ton of snaps, which I definitely don't really understand. I guess we can move him up actually to uh, defensive tackle number one. I guess why not? I don't know why I didn't have them there to start with. And Foskey as well. Why don't we just move these two guys up? We're not going to be playing to win this year. I think they're pretty much better than the guys that I put them ahead of anyway. So a slight error on my part, but I have them in the starting lineup now for the home stretch of the season. But the team definitely looks pretty similar to how we were. I've seen that most of the progression happens towards the second half of the year anyway. So, so I'm not too concerned with this. I want to take a look at the draft class now and see how those quarterbacks are looking and who I should definitely target in next year's draft. So definitely a lot of movement on the draft board. Anton Forney now is ahead of these wide receivers. I think he was behind at least one of them. Uh, the quarterbacks, they're looking all right. I think I'd want to see them a little bit better. Uh, it looks like Michael Burley is looking like the best right now compared to Craig Rollins, who has a lot of Bs on his resume, whereas I guess Michael Burley, he is down one in, I guess, the mock draft rankings, but he's got a lot more A's and he looks to be the better player as of right now. And Dustin Malice doesn't look to be that good either. So I think for right now, I think we're going to be targeting Michael Burley, but anything can change in the last half of the year. And this corner right here, Tyreek Waller looks really good. But again, we don't really have a need for corner. I don't know if I'm going to use my first round pick on that. Marcel Bigby out of California could be an absolute demon. I mean, he's 6'6", 227 pounds and has A's all across the board. That's gonna be pretty intriguing for me. I'm definitely gonna have to keep my eye on that. I know we already have two wide receivers, but if I can flip like maybe George Pickens for this guy who seems to be like a generational talent, I'm gonna do it. We don't have a ton of players to re-sign either. Just Chase Young and Cesar Ruiz are really our only two starters, but we have negative 6.7 million in cap space right now, I think because we have a lot of dead money from all of our trades. But I'm hoping by next off season, it kind of resets and I'll have enough to bring back Chase Young because that would definitely hurt if we cannot bring him back. I wasn't really thinking about the cap. I'm pretty sure though, once we get into the off season, I'll have a lot more money to spend and bring Chase Young back. The season is over. The New Orleans Saints went five and 12 on the year. Worst in the NFC South. Kind of what I wanted. I wish we would have maybe a couple less wins to get that top pick in the draft but that's all right let's go ahead and take a look at what the team did this year and see the progression i'm hoping some of our young guys got some dev upgrades and i don't really see any in offense the morale is super down on this team i think because we had such a down year but the bright side chris olave is an 87 overall george pickens is really an 82 but he's down three James Cook up to a 77. He's down two. Defensively, we're looking pretty good. Chase Young, Brian Brzee, Foskey, all of these guys developed this year. Asante Samuel Jr. had a pretty good year. Same with Marshawn Lattimore. And then Javon Holland in the secondary. He's up to an 87 overall if you take away the morale. And then Jeremiah Uso Karamoa, he had a pretty good season as well, up to an 83 overall. So definitely a pretty decent year in terms of development for our players. You go to stats and James Winston had a very Winston-like season. 3,900 yards, 25 touchdowns, and 17 interceptions. Rushing James Cook didn't have a super good year, only 695 yards and eight touchdowns. Receiving though, Chris Olave with 1,300 yards. Traquan Smith had 1,000. I don't know how he got snaps over George Pickens. That makes zero sense to me. But oh well, he's 1,000 yards, seven touchdowns, and George Pickens with a pretty quiet year. Defensively, our defensive line was led by Nathan Shepard with six and a half sacks. Chase Young himself had six. Foskey, as a rookie, had five. And you go to tackles for loss, and Chase Young had 24. So he was an absolute beast for us this year, interception-wise. Marshawn Lattimore, four picks. Awusa Karamoa, three himself. And Pete Warner even had two interceptions. So a pretty good year for our defense. The season recap, the Carolina Panthers with a rookie quarterback, I guess, won the Super Bowl. I rebuilt them in the last episode. It took me like four or five years. And it looks like Frankie Louvu won Super Bowl MVP. What a weird year in the NFL. Dak Prescott won MVP. Mike McCarthy won Coach of the Year. CeeDee Lamb, Offensive Player of the Year. The Cowboys had a really good season, but they could not beat a rookie quarterback in the playoffs, I assume. B. John Robinson, Brian Branch, Rookies of the Year. We didn't get any of those awards, but that's the season recap. Big problem number one in the rebuild, Chase Young. I have negative 15 million in cap space. All that restructuring, all that kicking the can down the road for the Saints in real life is screwing me right here. So Chase Young, I don't know if I'm going to be able to bring him back. He's up to a superstar X factor, which... Definitely is going to hurt, but I think I might have to let him go. Rashawn Slater, I am accepting his option. His fifth year, I have to bring him back, obviously. And Cesar Ruiz, I'm going to have to let walk. I don't have any money to bring any of these guys back. 
I'm a little bit disappointed about Chase Young because we did give up a decent amount to get him, but I thought, hey, maybe the money would carry over and we'd be able to have enough to bring him back. But looks like I'm wrong, and that's the first huge error of GM Mathis NFL in this video. All right, I'm sending Foster Moreau to the Cincinnati Bengals for a third round pick in this year's draft, which actually is a really nice trade for us. And then we're also gonna send away Shepard to the Chicago Bears for a fifth round pick. This is basically just a salary dump. All right, so trading away those players for whatever reason lowered my cap number. I guess I don't understand what is going on with the salary cap in this game. I don't understand it at all. I, I thought of getting rid of a couple of those veterans that really didn't have a future on this team would give me enough money to bring back Chase Young, but my cap number actually went down somehow so i don't understand that but anyway the free agent market is not too spectacular anyway i really just want to bring back chase young but i guess it was a little bit too much to ask but now it's time to go into the draft and uh hopefully we can try to rebuild this team i guess i can see if caesar ruiz is still in the market maybe bring him back nope he signed with the detroit lions so we're not bringing back any of our free agents we're rolling all that money over to next year but it's time to get on with the draft and we have some big plays to make. Here's the fifth and final mock draft. We have Marcus Fowler going number one overall, and then Abdul Booker. And they actually have us taking Anton Forney, which you know we're not going to do because we're probably going to go after this quarterback right here, Michael Burley. We're going to check on him and make sure that he fits what we want. He is only a round one or two talent, which is definitely not what you would want to take in a quarterback in the top five. All right, here we are in the NFL draft. I'm going to go ahead and skip the first two picks. I don't expect any of my players to go. I guess Carlos Colbert is the first overall pick. That was not not actually perceived in the mock draft. And Marcus Fowler is gonna go number two overall. So we basically have any choice out of any player on our board that I scouted. Anton Forney is a top five projection, but only around one or two talent. But look at Marcel Bigby right here. Top five projection, top five talent. He looks like an absolute unreal wide receiver. And I may actually have to make him my first pick off the board. Physicals, 4.24 40-yard dash, 43.3 vertical leap, and he's six foot six. This guy's actually Megatron. So if we do this and actually make him my selection, we're gonna have to trade back up and make sure that we can get Michael Burley because we do want to secure our quarterback of the future. And here's what he looks like. He looks pretty good, nothing super spectacular. I mean, he's got a decent amount of speed with a 4.7 and it says that his throw power is good. So he's not like a generational talent or anything, but he looks to be pretty solid. A awareness, A break tackle. He's got some nice accuracies, A short, A deep, medium for a B and A throw under pressure so he seems like a good first round selection he will be our quarterback of the future but i think with this pick here we are going to take marcel bigby we are going to make him our first selection top three pick and i'm hoping that he turns out to be everything that we want marcel bigby is an absolute stud 94 acceleration at 91 agility 99 jumping in 98 speed at six foot six 200 27 pounds this guy might be like an 88 overall right out of the gates yeah i don't think the dolphins are going to take a quarterback here so i'm going to move to the next pick and they take forney all right that's fine the jets are a quarterback potential team so i'm going to trade up with them to ensure that we get our quarterback all right that wasn't too bad of a trade we're sitting our first i think we're pick number 12 to move up to number five overall giving up our third fourth and fifth round pick this year not a huge haul definitely take that and with that pick we are going to take michael burgley who is a normal dev quarterback which definitely is not ideal but he does have 86 acceleration 92 change of direction and 91 throw power so that is a little bit disappointing that he is normal dev but i think we can get him up i think he will be a pretty high overall to start so that will be all right but we're definitely gonna have to progress and put him in the right offense make sure that he can get all sorts of stats and uh, attributes his first year but quarterback in the future Michael Burley, number five. I'm gonna do it again and take a pretty risky player right here. Eric Williams, left outside linebacker to help out our defense and our back end, but I think he could be a pretty good selection here at number 23. I don't have a ton of scouting on him, so there are a lot of ranges like A to C, B to D, you'll see all that all across the screen. But physicals, he seems to be like a pretty nice athlete, 4.59, 40 yard dash, third for all linebackers. And if you look at him, he's actually been up the draft boards by nine rankings. Only other person I was really considering was this tight end right here, who he shot up the draft draft boards as well but if you look at his numbers and his stats they're not too good either eric williams pass coverage linebacker hopefully he's hidden dev and he is that is huge 85 speed 90 excel 87 agility i would definitely take that here at the end of the first round we're here in the second round jason byron is calling my name he has very good metrics looking at all inside the top 10 for all single one of his physicals and then his skills a awareness a run block a pass block 
He looks like a really good center. We need help in the interior because we did lose Ruiz and for agency. So Jason Byron, welcome to the team. 89 strength, Hidden Deb. He seems to be another pretty good draft pick. He's either gonna be our future center or he's going to play left guard for us. So definitely a pretty nice pick here in the early of the second round. Here we are at the end of the third round. Not much on the board. So Jack Lowry, I think could be a nice tight end number two for us because we did trade away Moreau in the off season. 4 six forty time, he's pretty fast. He doesn't have a great acceleration though. And his traits, they're all over the place. So he's probably not gonna be super good out of the gates. But a guy that could be our second tight end, maybe develop him. He has some nice speed, nice size. I'm going to get Jack Lowry and he is a hidden dev player. So this is another pretty nice pick, 85 speed. And that is going to be my last pick of the draft. The CPU is going to do the rest, but not a bad draft. I think I took the only non-hidden dev trade player was my quarterback, which is a little bit sucky, but I think he's going to be high overall. So it'll be all right. Draft recap is not as good as I'd hoped it would have been. Marcel Bigby is only an 83 overall. In the last rebuild with the Panthers, I drafted a similar wide receiver, but I think he was like an 86 or 87 overall off the gate. So this is definitely not as good as that. And Burley is only a 75 overall. I thought he would be a little bit higher because he was normal dev, but he's not, which is a little bit disappointing. Our center though is a 76 overall, which is actually a really good pick where we got him in the second round. And then uh, I guess Eric Williams, 72 overall not super good either but maybe he can develop as a uh i guess i think it might be a star or better dev and look at the cpu taking Cade hunter in the fourth round i would definitely take that a 75 overall so it's two nice new starters for our interior with a new wide receiver coming in i'm gonna trade george pickens for richie grant and a third round pick we desperately need help at our other safety spot alongside javon holland so now that's gonna be our new young tandem i really like that so this is what the roster is looking like heading into year number two i really like how the team is coming along a very young offense now chris alive is up to a superstar dev big b now at wide receiver two i'm expecting a big year no pun intended from him on the outside james cook is still star dev 77 overall hope he has a jump this year and the offensive line look at how promising this looks Ramcheck and Slater as our book in tackles and then the interior we have two new players and Hunter and Byron already pretty high overalls for rookies I'm expecting them to be at least in the low 80s come the end of next season defensively now we have a pretty nice secondary with Richie Grant and Holland as our safeties Lattimore and Samuel as our corners and then we even have a Debo as our third corner so we really have a pretty nice secondary our defensive line though is really really lacking I wish we still had you know, Chase Young, who did get away from us, which definitely sucks. And I'm going to move Jeremiah Uso Karamoa to starting middle linebacker and have our new rookie play left outside linebacker. So our linebacker core, I think Pete Warner also got a dev upgrade. So the defense is very young, looking pretty good as well. We des desperately need help on the defensive line. Next year's draft, we're going to have to take a guy pretty high up to help out with that unit. But I like how the team looks. I'm going to do the training camp thing now for the quarterback, Burley, to try to get him a dev upgrade throughout the season. So I'm going to hop into that. But overall, this is what the team is looking like. Pretty promising future, in my opinion. Past skeleton time with Michael Burley. I have not done these in any of my past rebuilds, and I haven't really done much research on them either, but I'm going to try everything I can to get his dev trade up. As our quarterback of the future, we need him to be a stud and he's not going to be a stud as a normal dev player so whatever we can to potentially get some more points to help out his trait we're going to do that and there's perry with a nice catch all right we got silver hopefully that gives us a good enough boost for the next season all right here's the final look at the team heading into our second season in the rebuild burley is up to a 76 overall i'm hoping he gets to at least a 79 80 as a rookie pretty much nothing has changed morale is up on this team as we have so many young players this year but i'm pretty excited to see what we can do Hopefully some of these guys get dev upgrades this year and have a pretty effective season. But I changed around the playbooks. I made sure that we have the right players in the right spots. Now we're ready to get on with the sim. Through the halfway point, we are two and five, worse than we were last year. And let's take a look at the team. Our offense is up to an 87 overall. So I'm pretty intrigued to see how much improvement we have. Big B is a superstar X factor. A lobby is up to an 88 overall. Burley's up to a 77. Uh, across the board on our offensive line, it looks really good. Both these guys were star devs, which is fine. We have a completely star offensive line. Byron 78, Hunter 77, looks good to me. Defensively looking really good as well. Asante Samuel up to an 87 overall. Brian Brzee's up to a 76. Boski up to a 76. Both these guys might be future players on our defensive line. Secondary, Richie Grant's up to an 80. Javon Holland's up to an 88. And Jeremiah uso is up to an 84. And we haven't really seen much from our rookie yet, but seems like he still has some uh, upgrading to do as well quite a few players ready to negotiate on defense but we have plenty of cap space this year of course javon holling gonna give him a very player friendly deal we have plenty of money to give around let's go ahead and bring back the pillars of our defense sante samuel jr he's gonna get another huge contract as well and we're already down to 37 million jeremiah was he's gonna get a nice contract as well 
Richie Grant, we just traded for him. He's going to come back on a pretty nice deal as well. Keep him for the next four years. Pete Warner, he's developed pretty good. I'm going to give him a contract extension as well. We're bringing back all of our defenders. Also, Debo is not super interested in coming back, and I don't really have a huge rationale to bring him back on a huge deal either because he is our cornerback number three. And Juwan Johnson, I'm not going to worry about bringing him back as well. Here are also the top prospects and next year's draft. Looks like another pretty good draft in terms of the trench play. Donovan Poole, he's the top guy in the draft. He doesn't look super good off first glance but Kalen Fleming we don't really need an offensive lineman he looks pretty good another wide receiver so probably one of these rushers or defensive tackles I'm going to try to get uh, to help bolster up our defensive line but nothing super crazy in this draft off first glance we'll definitely see come draft time though completely new team this year but we end the year with the same record as last year 5 and 12 I don't really care a ton about the record I just want to see the improvement of this team and hopefully there's a good amount. Burley's up to a 78 overall. He's not changed in his dev trait yet. Big B 87 overall. Alavi's up to a 91. And defensively, look at our rookie here, Eric Williams. He's up to a 75 overall, but he's a superstar. I think it was because I changed him to be our sub linebacker and he must have really taken off. Defensive line, Brzee and Foskey both look really good. So I think we have two pillars on our defensive line. We're going to need a little bit more help there, but the defense, it's really young. It's really cheap for right now, and it's looking really, really good. Pretty good year for a rookie quarterback, 4,300 yards, 27 touchdowns, 10 picks on a 68% completion percentage. Rushing, James Cook had a much better year with 900 yards and five touchdowns. Receiving, Chris Olave had 1,500 yards and 11 touchdowns, our rookie slowly behind him with 908 touchdowns himself. Defensively, not a ton of sacks, but Foskey and Brzee both led our team with four sacks. Tackles for loss, Brzee had 12 and Peyton Turner had 11. Interceptions, Asante Samuel had five, Holland had three, Richie Grant had two, and Caramosa had two. Defense caused a lot of turnovers, but not a lot of pressure, so that's definitely going to mean that we need some help on our defensive line. Draft board, pretty much the same as we left off. I don't really think it's changed like at all. Uh, I think I am going to go after one of these either pass rushers or interior defensive lineman dean stackhouse looks like an absolute stud look at his physicals good acceleration elite agility and he just looks like a beast all across the board his skills even look pretty solid so he might be the target season recap the carolina panthers keep making it back to the super bowl but this time they lost to the baltimore ravens lamar jackson mvp and super bowl mvp we did not win offensive or defensive rookie of the year which definitely sucks but hey doesn't matter. Our rookies are still going to be the best from the class. Chris Olave, I am going to accept his fifth year option. We're going to have to pay him a pretty good amount of money next year, but that's finding superstar X Factor. Paul Sonidibo, I already mentioned him and Jawan Johnson before I simmed. I'm not going to bring these two guys back. They can leave. Uh, Trevor Penning, I'm probably not going to accept his fifth year option because he does not play for us. There's not a whole lot on the free agent market as well. I kind of went through it. Not really a ton of what I'm interested in. Not a ton of players that are young and fit. Kind of the timeline of our rebuild so i'm probably not going to spend like any of my cap room in this off season all right here we are in the draft we have the number three overall pick and i may try to trade back and then take that defensive tackle i was looking at but we're going to see uh, how that kind of folds where we could get back into the draft first pick is going to be donovan pool didn't want him second pick is the fleming left tackle and now it's our selection and let's see what we can get as far as trading the pick away there was no good offers for this pick so i'm just going to take him dean stackhouse look how good he looks his physicals all in the top range for defensive tackles skills he looks like a beast i'm going to take him he can be a pretty lead player for us dean stackhouse welcome to the saints he is hidden dev and he has 96 strength so this does look like to be a pretty good pick maybe a reach for being a top three pick but i think in terms of just not risking him being taken for what it's worth i think he is going to be a really good player for us we didn't have a second round pick we're here in the third round and most of the top of the board is cornerbacks and wide receivers i don't really have any interest in any of those so a tight end because we did lose uh juan johnson in free agency to pair with who we drafted last year maybe this guy can be something good i'm not really expecting it because his physicals aren't super good seems to be like a mid athletic tight end and then his skills yeah it's a very wide range between a and c so i'm not expecting this guy to be super good but here late in the third why not take a shot on a 6-5 tight end so yep he is normal dev 81 speed 86 excel but hey maybe he can be a decent overall unfortunately though, that is our last premium pick our next selection is in the fifth round i'm not going to do that so end of the draft two selections and uh, i think we have a lot of ammo next year though but hopefully the defensive tackle turns out to be a really nice player. All right, we got some good news and some bad news. The defensive tackle I took is a 79 overall, which is awesome. Westbrook though, our tight end is a 65 overall. 
I think that's back to back years. I've taken a really low overall tight end, which definitely not ideal. And then in the fifth and sixth round, we got a cornerback and wide receiver. The CPU drafted them 74 overall, which is definitely pretty solid. I guess they're both going to run out those rooms because I did lose my third corner in free agency. So now we have a pretty decent young one and uh, Crawford. All right. So here is the roster heading into our third season. Burley is up to star dev, which is awesome to see. I guess he got it over the offseason. James Cook is now up to an 81 overall two superstar x-factor wide receivers in bigby and olave and then truman our rookie wide receiver he is hidden dev i guess he's going to be a star which is definitely nice for your third wide receiver offensive line looks amazing 290 overall tackles and then an 80 overall plus interior tight end though it's super weak we may have to trade like trevor penning for a tight end or something because that's not going to get it done defensively though eric williams for whatever reason this guy has turned into an absolute demon he is a superstar x-factor in year number two I think he was like a 73 overall when we drafted him and now he's just skyrocketed to being just an absolute stud. I'm hoping it's not one of those things that where like Madden has a glitch and they just have him as, as a superstar X factor. And then by the end of next season, he's going to be like normal dev. It's happened to me too many times to not be fearful of that. But safety duo looks really good with Richie Grant and Javon Holland. Corners, we're still looking really, really strong. We still have Taylor 77 overall and now our rookie as well as 75. So we're pretty deep at corner. Defensive line, Stackhouse, 79 overall with Brzee. That's a really nice interior defensive line. But we do need help at right edge. So that's a huge point of emphasis for us heading into next offseason. Pete Warner, Karamoa, and Eric Williams, our linebacker core, is probably one of the best in the league. So hopefully Burley can get up there and hopefully get close to superstar dev this year. But I'm going to try to get one or two trades going to try to pick up a tight end and a, uh, I guess, a low budget right end. But we're going to see what we can do. The team looks really really good for only heading into year number three we're shipping away trevor penning for greg dulich to the denver broncos both guys have one year left on their contract but we need desperate help at tight end dulich could be our tight end of the future he's still young enough trade is done how about a right end because it's probably the worst starter in the nfl we're gonna pick up clinton farrell he's just laying on the free agent market i'm just gonna sign him to the active roster three million dollars for a one-year deal and now we have kind of a patchwork band-aid for just this season. First look at next year's draft looks like a pretty good quarterback class. Uh, Ian Johnson, Mitchell Clifford, Joshua Nixon, but Mason Bradley, wide receiver, still atop the class. Seems like what, three years in a row, wide receiver has been atop of uh, the draft class. Calvin Wynn is at interest of me. Uh, I think maybe Picasso, Pointer, any of these guys on the defensive line are pretty cool. I mean, look at these quarterbacks though. Three more quarterbacks basically round out the top 15. A ton of quarterbacks in this year's draft, but we really don't have a need for one because of how uh, Burley came along last year. But one last look at the team. This is what we're looking like. Really, really nice on offense. Two stud wide receivers, a really good offensive line. And now we have Dulich as our tight end. And our, our defense looking a lot better as well this year. I'm hoping we get some nice progress from our three really young defensive linemen. That would be really fun to see. And Eric Williams, just please keep your X factor. That'd be awesome. And uh, overall, Stevens is looking really, really good. I think we, all we need right now is just a nice young uh, right end. And if there's not any in the draft next year, I could potentially, because we have the cap space and the capital, to trade for some really up and coming right in. So that's definitely an option next year. And uh, I think offensively, we're really good. Just need to see some progress from our quarterback and some of the young offensive linemen. But I think our Super Bowl window is in the next couple of years. Halfway point, once again, the New Orleans Saints are three and four, but our team is up to an 86 overall. I think we're looking pretty good as far as improvement goes. Let's definitely take a look at that. Burley is now an 80 overall. We still have Olave and Bigby as superstar X factors. Our offensive line looks pretty decent. Not a ton of improvement there. Defensively, Eric Williams is almost up to an 80 overall. He's still superstar X factor. And look at Stackhouse. He was actually a superstar dev, which is awesome for us. And pretty much across the way, Crother is as well as a star dev which is cool but across the way everything looks pretty much the same on defense as i've stated many times before i think most improvement happens towards the end of the season anyway but i like how we're looking three and four offense defense looks pretty good let's get on with the rest of the season before that though we have a lot of people to sign uh rashawn slater i'm definitely going to bring him back he's one of the best i think left tackles in the league and he's going to come back to us but we only have 26 million in cap space james cook has been improving a lot but I'm not going to throw like a huge, huge bag at a running back. I think that's a fair deal. We get him back. Same with Greg Dulich. He's been improving. I think he came to our tight end of the future. He's going to come back as well. But now we have 14 million in cap space. Elante Taylor, since we drafted the rookie corner, I'm not going to bring him back. Lennon Farrell, probably not going to bring him back either. And uh, the rest of these guys, I don't really care about. So 14 million cap space, bring back our key players. And I think in the next couple of years, we're going to have a decent amount of people to still bring back. All right, the season is over. We finished seven and 10, no playoffs for us. I wish we could have maybe made a run for the playoffs, but we're not going to this year. Burley, 82 overall. You guys can see the team. Uh, offensive line looks really, really good. James Cook, 
83 overall. Truman is up to a 78 overall, our rookie wide receiver, but we still have our two X factors. And defensively, Eric Williams remains a superstar X factor, which is awesome. He's up to an 81 overall. Owusu Karamoa, 86. Pete Warner is an 80. And our defensive line still looks really, really good. Uh, I guess Brzee's up to an 81 when you take into account uh, the morale that he has down. But the team looks really, really nice. Holland is up to a 91 overall free safety. Richie Grant's an 83. I think next year is when we make a deep playoff run. And then the year after that should theoretically be our Super Bowl year. But here's the team after our third year of this rebuild. Stats wise, Michael Burley had a huge jump up this year, 4,000 yards, 30 touchdowns, 11 picks, 71% completion. Rushing James Cook had a monster season, 1,000 yards and 16 touchdowns. Love to see that. Receiving Chris Olave was a little bit down this year, but had 1,200 yards, eight touchdowns. Big B, 1,000 yards, nine touchdowns. Defensively, Foskey had another huge jump up with seven sacks. Stackhouse, our rookie with five and a half. Farrell, who we signed off the street with five and Brzee with two. Tackles for loss, Stackhouse and Foskey lead the way. Interceptions, Eric Williams, our second year linebacker, had four picks, another good season for him. Marshawn Latimer with four. Pete Warner with three, Holland with two. A little bit less turnovers, I think, from last year, but still pretty good year for our defense. Season recap, our division rivals, the Atlanta Falcons, beat the Baltimore Ravens in the Super Bowl. Desmond Ritter is Super Bowl MVP. Joe Burrow won NFL MVP in the regular season. Zach Taylor, coach of the year. And again, none of our rookies win rookie of the year, which I guess sucks, but I didn't really expect it a ton from a defensive tackle. Except for the fifth year option on Brian Brzee and Alante Taylor, he has some interest in re-signing, so I'm gonna give him a pretty low ball type of contract. He's gonna test free agency, so he's not gonna accept that low ball, but that's all right. Clinton Farrell, I don't think I'm gonna bring back. I think I'm either gonna trade for a right end or draft one pretty high in the draft. And outside of that, I don't really have much interest in any of these guys. So that's gonna be a wrap for our resides. Really not much in free agency. Once again, a couple old left tackles. I'm not gonna entertain a punter. I mean, not really. Look at how much Tyron Matthew has fallen off since we traded him. That was a pretty good trade. But yeah, not really a ton on the free agent market. I don't think I really want to sign anybody. I'll just carry this money over to next offseason. We're going to have a lot of people to pay. But again, kind of sucks. Nothing on the free agent market. We're going to head to the draft. And if I don't like any of those top pass rushers on the defensive line, I'm probably going to trade my first round pick for a proven and good right end. All right, here we are in the draft. Uh, not really a ton of what we're looking for. I scouted some of the defensive linemen like Cedric Frost and Andy Saxton. And they're not super good prospects. He's got round one or two talent, which is, you know, definitely better than Cedric Frost, but if I really want to spend like my top 15 pick on this guy, I don't know. I might have to trade my pick away and try to get me an established right end. I was thinking about Miles Moody because he looks pretty good, but I don't think that I really need another linebacker because of how well Eric Williams has uh, progressed. All right, so I just got Will Anderson Jr. from the Houston Texans for only a first round pick. I was just trying to see kind of what the value was regarding Will Anderson. I put up my first round pick and the Texans accepted it on first try. I don't know exactly why they did that. 91 overall, superstar left in, still super young, but I don't care. They accepted it. He's now a New Orleans Saint and our defensive line is looking really, really good. Here in the second round, Jalen Reese looks like to be the best player on the board. He's up five spots from over the year. He's got a round one or two projection. We're in the middle of the second round, top player on the board, looking at like wide receivers, left tackles, free safeties. I don't really have a need for any of these players. I think Jalen Reese looks pretty good. I'm hoping that some of those A's and C's turn out to be A's and he's definitely going to be a good player. So Jalen Reese, welcome to the team. And he is hidden dev with 88 speed, 87 XL. And we're definitely going to take that as some more depth in our secondary. All right, here we are in the middle of the third round. I'm going to go after yet another tight end top of the board. Corey Gordon, he looks to be pretty good. His physicals are off the charts. He's the second fastest tight end, first 20 yard shuttle, first three cone drill, third vertical leap. He's got all the metrics that you would like in a pretty freak athlete. And his skills, there are a lot of variants as far as the A to C, but I'm gonna risk it here in the third round, three straight drafts, drafting a tight end. But Corey Gordon, welcome to the team. And he is, in fact, hidden dev, 91 Excel, 88 agility, 84 speed, I think this was a pretty good pick. But we have no more premium picks in this draft. I'm gonna go ahead and skip and let the CPU do the rest, but not a bad draft, especially getting Will Anderson in the first round. Draft recap, Jalen Reese is a 75 overall. Same with Corey Gordon. I finally got myself a good tight end, third time's the charm. Failed on the first two, completely whiffed, but this time we get a really nice tight end and he might be our tight end of the future. Here's the team going into year number four. And man, I'm really, really liking how this is turning out. 
Michael Burley, 82 overall. We need to see a huge leap from him this year. James Cook is now an 84 star. Still two superstar X Factor wide receivers in Bigby and Olave and Truman, who we drafted last year, is up to a 78. He's kind of like our slot wide receiver, our third. Offensive line, two amazing tackles. Interior's looking really, really strong as well. They continue to improve. Dulich, 79 overall. He'll get up to an over an 80 this year. And then we have Gordon, who we drafted in this year's draft. Defensively, though, is where I'm super excited. Will Anderson, 92 overall with Stackhouse, both superstars. Foskey on the defensive line is looking really good, really young. I think we're going to be a really nice team in just a couple years, especially on defense. Samuel, Lattimore, two stud corners. We still have Crawther, who we drafted, and I think that last year's draft, the CPU, all in up to superstar 91 overall, Richie Grant, and then of course our rookie and Reese. Linebacking unit is super good. Eric Williams is still a superstar X Factor. Warner, middle linebacker, I changed his position. And Jeremiah Wusakermo is now going to play right outside linebacker for us. Can't really see a flaw on this team. It's looking really, really strong all across the board. The last big thing is Burley. We need some improvement from him this year. Maybe superstar getting up his dev. So we need to make sure we give him a lot of good stats and that his overall continues to rise but this definitely looks like a playoff team to me i changed the playbooks to uh, the cowboys offense and i think for defense the baltimore ravens there seem to be the two best playbooks in the game but i'm gonna go ahead and sim through mid-season and hopefully this team is on pace to make the playoffs ladies and gentlemen this is what we love to see the new orleans saints are six and one through the first seven weeks of the season our team is cooking and looking at the team we're looking really really good burley's up to an 85 overall 95 overall for Olave, 94 for Bigby, 85 for James Cook. The interior of the offensive line is beginning to really, really improve. Hunter's up to an 84, Byron's up to an 83. Dulich, like I said, is up to an 80 overall. Gordon, 76. Defensively, Eric Williams is up to an 84. Warner, Karamoa. The team just looks really, really good. I don't see a flaw like I've said many, many times. This team is really, really good. And now we just need to finish the season off. We're six and one. Continue that momentum through the rest of the season. And we should have a really, really good year. A lot of players to re-sign, but we do have a lot of money. Chris Olave, I'm going to give him an absolute bag. Six years, a massive contract. He's going to come back. 80 million left. We have to bring back Will Anderson as well because we just traded a first round pick for him. He's going to come back. And now we're all the way down to 60 million. Isaiah Foskey, Marshawn Lattimore, Ryan Rams check. We have a lot of players we got to bring back. Foskey, I'm going to give him a nice deal as well. He has really emerged on our defensive line and our cap space is going pretty quickly. Uh, Marshawn Lattimore, I'm not going to give him the absolute bag, but I'm going to give him a pretty decent deal. He's going to come back. Ram check is interesting. I'm going to give him a, uh, a player friendly deal, but not a super player friendly deal. He's going to come back. That's pretty cool. Now we have 13 million left in cap space. I'm probably not going to bring back any of these players, but we definitely need to be vigilant with our money in the next couple of years. The New Orleans Saints with an amazing 14 and three season, first in the NFC South with the Panthers actually finishing 14 and three as well. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers finishing 10 and seven. So a really, really good division, but we're going to win it and we're going to host a playoff game, an absolutely massive jump for us this year. And I'm super super excited with what we did looking at the team michael burley is up to an 87 overall our both of our wide receivers are 96 overalls james cook is an 86 offensive line is probably the best in the league i mean damn look how good that is 88 86 86 and then 94 91 tackle Dulich up to an 83 and then defensively eric williams is up to an 86 overall jeremiah was is up to a 90 stack house is up to an 89 overall will anderson's up to a 96 what a trade that was for us sante samuel Lattimore, bosky javon holland and richie grant and look at reese reese is actually a 78 overall superstar x factor this team is absolutely insane so we may actually have to put in reese or a grant maybe after this year a trade grant if reese stays as a superstar x factor but needless to say this team is ridiculous uh definitely probably the best i've built so far in all my rebuilds and now it's just about carrying this momentum through the playoffs maybe we can win the super bowl this year i don't want to get ahead of myself but i mean damn this team's looking really good we really progressed stats wise michael burley actually had a worse year than last year he had 4100 yards 29 touchdowns 13 picks rushing james cook again had a great season a thousand yards and 14 touchdowns receiving alave 1400 yards 15 touchdowns big b 836 three touchdowns a little bit of a down year for him defensively though will anderson jr had 11 and a half sacks stack house had nine and a half and foskey had seven that pass rush is ridiculous and tackles for a loss will anderson with 21 
Foskey with 19. Interceptions wise, Asante Samuel Jr. with four, Lattimore with three, Eric Williams with two, and Karamoa with one. Just an unreal defense, definitely were the anchor of our team this year. With the Dallas Cowboys actually got the number one seed, we are the number two seed facing off against the number seven seed Giants. So this should be a victory for us. The Panthers finished what? With 14 wins and now they're the fifth seed, which is actually unbelievable. But the sim looks pretty normal. As always, the Chiefs and the Cowboys are the first round buy teams. They always are. So we're probably gonna have to beat both of them to make it to the Super Bowl and win it. But first order of business is against the New York Giants. Let's hop into the first playoff game of the rebuild. All right, here we are in the Superdome starting off, I think with the ball and we're going to get three points, but the Giants have a really nice drive. They're gonna score a touchdown. We're gonna answer and go down with a touchdown as well. I think we're gonna take a lead into the half. If we can stop the Giants, it looks like we do. We get the ball back and we're driving once again and we get another touchdown before half, but the Giants with like, 20 seconds on the clock go down and get a touchdown themselves and now they're going to start off and we're going to get i think that was another touchdown 24 to 14 another field goal we're up 13 late in the fourth quarter the giants get a touchdown to keep the game in reach of uh coming back and looks like we are going to escape with the victory the giants are calling all their timeouts fourth and 11 uh big field goal we're going to make it and that is the ball game new orleans saints and dennis allen win their first playoff game of the rebuild against Brian Dayball and the New York Giants, 30 to 21. And we're moving on to the divisional round. Michael Burley, pretty basic game, 200 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions. James Cook had over 100 yards and two touchdowns. He led our offense. Truman, our second year wide receiver, had 84 yards and a touchdown. And he actually like led our team, which is really surprising because of course we have Big B and we have Olave who both had pretty quiet games. Defensively, Will Anderson and Jalen Alexander both led our teams in sacks. I don't even know who Jalen Alexander Alexander is. I think he's a CPU drafted guy, but Will Anderson, two sacks. And Asante Samuel Jr. carries over his regular season interceptions to the playoffs and he gets a pick as well. The Minnesota Vikings are our next opponent and they defeated the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, our division rival, 28 to 24 in the wild card round. They are the number three seed, so this should be a pretty good game. And if we win, we're going to get the right to play the Cardinals or the Cowboys in the NFC Championship. The Vikings have a pretty scary offense Nick Chubb, Justin Jefferson, TJ Hawkinson, and our defense is going to look to shut them down today. Let's hop into it. Here we are in the Caesar Superdome once again for the division round, and we're hopefully going to get away with a victory in today's game. Starting off, I think we do have the ball once again. We're going to be stopped and kick a field goal, and the Vikings already with that powerful offense get down, answer with the field goal themselves. Looks like a defensive battle so far in the first half. Can't get much going. We think we're going to kick another field goal. Yes, we do. The Vikings are driving. They kick another field goal, and that's the end of the first half. The Saints now are driving. We're going to score a touchdown, 13 to 6. And the Vikings offense is really, really struggling, but they're actually going to answer with a touchdown. And I'm going to step in here. Third and seven, two minute warning. And we really get our first look of what this team looks like actually on the field with Bigby, Truman, Olave, Cook, and Dulich in our really solid offensive line. But this is a really important play. We need to pick this up to continue this drive. And I think I see is that Big B, yes, it is. Our big wide receiver one is going to hold on to that ball. I'm just taking down. I'm just going to run with James Cook. Continue to drip the clock. The Vikings still have three timeouts. They can stop the clock, but I'm just going to try to get this first down. And there goes the timeouts. Second and inches. Going to pick up the first down with James Cook. Just going to fall down. They call their second timeout. First and goal from the seven yard line. James Cook is going to be hit in the backfield, but still pick up a few. I think we're going to be able to take this all the way down and kick a field goal to win the game. Second and goal. James Cook is going to be stopped at the five. I had two clock on. And yes, we are going to be able to drip this all the way down to a game winning field goal. And uh, we're going to be able to get out of here with a victory as long as we can make that kick. So here we go, third and goal, just go down James Cook, no need to fumble. And we are officially about to have the game winning field goal on the three yard line, less than 10 seconds left after I call this timeout. Will Lutz steps onto the field to kick the game winning field goal and it is good. The New Orleans Saints are moving on to the NFC Championship game. And I think this is what, year number four of the rebuild. Dennis Allen has his team and the NFC Championship game. And the New Orleans Saints are on their way to their second Super Bowl in franchise history. Another pretty quiet game from Michael Burley, 197 yards and a touchdown. No turnovers though. James Cook, pretty good game. No touchdown, 79 yards. Receiving Big B and Olave finally had some pretty good games for us in the playoffs. Defensively, Anderson, Foskey, both with the sack and Marshawn Lattimore got his pick. So our secondary is really coming up huge. And yeah, they're gonna fuel us to the NFC Championship. Did you really think we were gonna be playing anybody else I didn't. We're traveling to Jerry's world to face off against the Cowboys. One versus two seed. Hopefully we can get the victory and move on to the Super Bowl and probably face the Kansas City Chiefs for three rebuilds in a row. The Cowboys top three players, CeeDee Lamb, Micah Parsons, Dak Prescott, pretty similar to their team today, but 92 overall for us, 88 overall for them. 
We have the slide advantage. Let's go ahead and hop into this game and defeat the Cowboys in Jerry's world. Here we go for the biggest game of the rebuild thus far. We're traveling to Jerry's world to face off against the Dallas Cowboys, and we're gonna start it off with a touchdown. The Cowboys very quickly answer though, and this looks like a back and forth game, 14 to 14, end of the first half. We're calling some timeouts, driving, and we're not gonna be able to score before half, but we answer with a touchdown to start the second half, 21 to 14. Cowboys are gonna get a field goal out of it, and this game is coming down to the wire. Saints, 21-17. I think we have first and goal. Yes, we do. I'm going to punch this in and pretty much ice the game. The Cowboys have no timeouts, but Burley looking for Bigby. I'm going to find him and I'm actually going to be hit as I throw and it's going to be incomplete. That probably wasn't the smartest play call, but I'm going to run it off right here to James Cook and he's going to be stopped in the backfield to take a huge hit. We're coming down to the two minute warning. Third and goal. We need to get this in. Burley, I'm going to get him on the move and there's already some pressure and James Cook and I get it to him. I can. James Cook is going to get into the end zone. Great play call and a great execution from our team. And that pretty much ices the game. I say that and then the Cowboys score a touchdown and get the two point conversion in like, what was that? 30 seconds. And we're gonna get the onside kick though. So the game is over, but a little bit of a scare. But the New Orleans Saints are an absolute wagon. We defeat the Cowboys on the road, take care of business in the NFC Championship game. And we are headed to the Super Bowl with a pretty young and up and coming team still. Burley really showed out today, 260 yards, three touchdowns, no turnovers. James Cook had 82 yards himself, pretty good game. Receiving wise, Olave had a really good game. Bigby had a monster game with 120 yards and two touchdowns. Defensively, Foskey again showed up with a sack. Michael Parsons had a sack for the Cowboys. Marshawn Lattimore even had a half sack, but a really good game for our offense. And we're gonna have to replicate that in the Super Bowl if we're gonna take down more than likely the Kansas City Chiefs. Wow, I am shocked the Las Vegas Raiders defeated the Kansas Kansas City Chiefs in the AFC Championship game. And finally, we're gonna be facing a different team than the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. It looks like a really nice back and forth. The Raiders just had a slightly better second half to take care of the game. Really even on yards, they even forced a turnover against Patrick Mahomes. So we have our work cut out for us. Their quarterback is Chase Kincaid. I don't really remember him from one of the drafts, but he must have been taken, I think, in the last two years. Josh Jacobs is still the running back. He had a monstrous game, so we're definitely gonna have to keep an eye on him. Receiving Michael Mayer was their leading receiver. They also have Wes Watkins, Jacoby Myers, and they still have Devontae Adams as well. So roughly the same skill position groups for them. Defense, they still have Max Crosby. He's wrecking havoc, one and a half sacks in the AFC Championship game. So roughly the same Raiders team, but just a few different changes across their offense, especially at quarterback. But here's the final roster heading into the Super Bowl. Michael Burley is a 90 overall now, 97 overall wide receiver, 98 overall wide receiver, and an 82 overall wide receiver number three. Offensive line is ridiculous. Dulitz is now a superstar, 83 overall tight end. Defense Defensively, Eric Williams, 87 overall. He's a stud. Will Anderson is a superstar X Factor now. Bosky got up to superstar X Factor. He was one of the original players from this rebuild. Lattimore got up to a superstar as well. Our second year player, Crother, 81 overall slot corner. Asante Samson, 93 overall. Richie Grant, 86. Holland, 95 overall. This team is ridiculous. The Raiders are an 88 overall or 92 overall, but let's hop into this game and hopefully take care of business and win our second Super Bowl in franchise history. Here we are in Hard Rock Stadium, home of the Miami Dolphins, and we're hopefully gonna get away with the Super Bowl here today. We're starting off with the ball, I believe, and we're having a pretty nice drive to open up the gates. We're inside the 10 yard line, and we are gonna get a touchdown. The Raiders are gonna try to answer themselves, and we're gonna score. I think they must have turned the ball over, but they're gonna answer right back 14 to seven, and we're driving once again, and we're gonna kick a field goal, and the Raiders are gonna get no points before half, and we're looking really, really good here in the second half, 17 to 10. We're driving once again, not trying to rhyme, but hey, it, it did work there, 20 to 10. Raiders, once again, are struggling to move the ball, and I think we are gonna be able to get away with this and win ourselves the Super Bowl. We get a nice field goal. The Raiders are not gonna be able to do anything. Why don't we hop in here and try to run out this clock with this Super Bowl roster that we have built. Just a juggernaut of a team. James Cook's gonna pick up the first down and the Raiders are calling their last timeouts. Third and seven, why not try to pass it, pick it up, air it out a little bit, have a little bit of fun. So here we go. I don't really see anything open. We are gonna fumble the football and the Raiders are gonna pick it up. Now that one hurts a little bit. That definitely does hurt. I try to get a little cue with it, but it doesn't really matter that much. We get a chance to look at the defense now with Eric Williams, who looks like an absolute stud. Look how quick he's moving around the field. And they're gonna drop that and we're gonna take over with eight seconds to go. But ladies and gentlemen, the New Orleans Saints have won the Super Bowl. I think this was in year four of the rebuild. Definitely the most efficient one I have done yet. Second in franchise history, completely rebuilt the team from scratch, got rid of all the old players, brought in a ton of young talent 
ton of nice draft picks and we have finally done it and what a year for the team 14 and 3 and around the table like this was pretty fun player stats burley had probably his worst game of the playoffs with 245 yards a touchdown and a pick rushing though james cook had 43 yards and a touchdown it looks like our defense might have won this game for us but a lot of 800 yards and a touchdown doolich 55 yards big b with 66 defensively stack house had two sacks Crosby even had a sack in the Super Bowl, but Foskey and Werner also had sacks. Interceptions, Richie Grant had a pick in the big game, which is awesome to see. Season recap, Super Bowl champion New Orleans Saints, wide receiver Chris Olave won Super Bowl MVP, which is crazy. We didn't win any of the regular season awards, but you know who really cares? We officially won Super Bowl, and we did it with a pretty healthy cap and draft capital situation. If you watch any of my previous rebuilds, I really traded like a lot of picks in the later years to have help me get over the hump. That wasn't really the case in this rebuild. We did a really, really nice job. Marcel Bigby, I'm going to accept his option for uh, his fifth year option. Eric Williams as well. I don't really know why these guys have low re-sign interest. I mean, they're stars on a Super Bowl winning team, but hey, whatever. Same with Michael Burley. I don't know why he doesn't want to re-sign with us. He just won a Super Bowl with us. But three studs that we drafted, Michael Burley, Eric Williams, and Marcel Bigby are all going to have their fifth year options accepted. Keandre Miller, I'm going to give him a low risk offer. He can just come back as our running back too. And I am going to run back next year. I'm just going to send the entire season and see if we did win the Super Bowl or not but yeah really no free agents whatsoever the team is still going to be the exact same next year and now we see if we can build off of what we did free agent class tyree kill lane johnson marcus williams i'm not going to sign any of these players we don't really have a need for kind of really any of them here's the prospects for the draft if you wanted to see this as well trevor henry leads the class with a really nice quarterback field general archetype aaa all across the board looks like some really good players but i'm just gonna let the cpu draft for us i don't really have much interest because our team is so loaded we already won a super bowl i just want to see if we can run it back with roughly the same team but i just wanted to show you guys the top prospects and here's what the cpu drafted a bunch of linemen we drafted uh, daniel mckinney left tackle out of michigan state in the first round 73 overall doesn't look too good will cat it another defensive tackle 73 overall our best player was right guard Christian Lucas, right guard in the third round out of uh, Georgia. So not really sure what the CPU was doing, I guess building some depth for our lines, but not really any players that are gonna help us this year. But here's what the lineup is looking like. Burley is still star. McCoy lost his dev trade, which sucks a little bit, but he's still an 85 overall. Defensively, we're still super good. Holland lost his dev trade though, and Marshawn Lattimore. I think they were both superstars. But our defensive line is still super nasty with Foskey, Stackhouse, and Will Anderson. So we're gonna be just fine. Defense is still really, really good. But I'm going to go ahead and send to the playoffs and we're going to see what record we have and if we can run back our Super Bowl title from a year ago. And you might not believe this, but the New Orleans Saints didn't even make the playoffs. We lost the final week of the season 23-17 to the Indianapolis Colts and that costed us the division. That's actually unbelievable. Here's the playoff picture. Falcons and Panthers make it for our division. But man, how do we not make it with like a 95 overall team? I, I just don't get it. The team looks amazing. As always, James Cook's up to a 90 overall though. We still have 98 wide receivers, 90 overall quarterback basically with Burley now at 89. Roster, James Cook's up to a 90. Two 98 overall wide receivers. Burley's up to an 89. Dulich, 84 superstar offensive line is still really, really good. Defensively, Eric Williams is up to a 90 overall. Jeremiah Wusa karamo is a 92. Will Anderson's a 99 overall Stackhouse 91 Foskey 85 I mean I, I mean how does this team not make the playoffs definitely the most talented team in the league but oh well we didn't make it but we did get our Super Bowl win last year that's really all that matters stats for the season Michael Burley with 4,400 yards 28 touchdowns 8 picks 74% completion definitely his best season as a pro 1,200 yards and 23 touchdowns for James Cook that's unbelievable. Receiving Big B with 1,200 yards, nine touchdowns, Olave with 1,107, and another 1,000 yard wide receiver. Three 1,000 yard wideouts. Truman, 1,000 yards, seven touchdowns. Defensively, Will Anderson with 13 and a half sacks. Stackhouse with six and a half. Foskey with five and a half. Jeremiah was with Kermo with four and a half. Eric Williams with four. Interception wise, we didn't have many turnovers this year. Maybe that's why we didn't win as many games, but Asante Samuel with two. Caramoa with one and Eric Williams with one. But that is going to do it for me, guys. We were not able to repeat as Super Bowl champions in back-to-back -back seasons, but we did get our Super Bowl win. We rebuilt the New Orleans Saints to having an absolute juggernaut of a team. If you did like the video, drop a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Let me know what team you want to see me rebuild next, whether it's the last NFC South team and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, or if you want me to just completely rebuild a different team in another division, just let me know. But as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in my next one.